everyone, and welcome to another episode of CLX Foundry Live, where we go inside customer builds and assemble them from the ground up. I'm your EJ Blue PDX, and of course, joining me right now, our lead technical expert, it's Paul Steffens, and today's builder of choice, Master Builder Hayden Hutchinson is back. The speed demon of all building of things. So, uh, lots of fun stuff. Hi, guys. How are you? Hey, you doing good? We're good. How are you? I'm, I'm excellent, and here's why, because today is the last day for everyone to get their entries in for the Horus PC build. This PC is absolutely incredible. It's that beautiful green one right there to the left of, uh, of Hayden, and it's rad. What's up, everybody? Oh, Tishio, hi. Uh, so, get your entries in. The link is in the chat. Exclamation, give Horus, I believe it is. Yes. And... We may or may not have more codes to give away. Who knows? Plus, we're also going to be assembling an amazing PC. You got to see the artwork before, and it is a Rengoku-inspired case. This is going to be for the winner of the Faceway giveaway, and that is going to be for one, the one and only, Flatone. I think I said that right. It's either that or Flat One, but I think it's Flatone. Um, so congratulations to Flatone for winning that. Gentlemen, what are we putting inside this incredible case? All right, so this build is going to match the Sway build that we did. Um, so we've got a 13900K with a 4080, 32 gigs of DDR5, 5600 speed memory, one terabyte NVMe drive with a four terabyte storage drive. So I think for this one, we should probably start off with showing the case since this is a beautiful design. So let me grab that real quick. <clears throat> Absolutely. All right. <laughs> Here we are. Look at that. It's gorgeous. I'll lean this forward That's, too. It's so sweet. Anybody who's ever seen Demon Slayer, that is one of Sway's favorite animes. Uh, I, one of mine as well. And this is going to be incredible to build into. Yeah. So excited. Alrighty. Alrighty. So I'll start pulling the panels off this, getting this case prepped, and I'll give Hayden the motherboard and start opening this up and getting it going. Awesome. So while you're getting that done, don't forget if you want to keep up to date on all the latest things from giveaways to show times to what's work going on next with CLX, make sure you're following our socials. That's YouTube, TikTok, and Twitter at CLX Gaming. All right, so for our motherboard today, we have an ASRock Z690 Steel Legend DDR5 motherboard, the same that went in the last one, which is a beautiful, beautiful board. As you can see, it's got some incredible heat sinks we'll be talking about here shortly in just a moment. Uh, and if you take a look when we get over to the spot of checking out those IOs, there's a lot of connectivity going on here. As for the processor, today we've got an Intel Core i9-13900K. A three gigahertz processor paul how much power is behind that yeah so this is an awesome processor obviously it's the new 13th gen i9 this is a 24 core 32 thread processor um, that's broken that's down wicked. between yeah it's it's nuts it's got eight p cores which are the performance cores which can hyper thread and give us 16 threads off those then it has 16 e cores which are the efficiency cores so it's got a base speed of three gigahertz and it'll boost up to 5.8 when it can. That's nuts. Yeah. Like, that's just a... every time we, every time we say it, I know it's like, this is the industry standard now. It still sounds nuts considering where we came from with processes just five years ago. It really does. I feel like five gigahertz is insanely fast and now we're just above that. So it's just crazy. So, yeah. The Z690 is a great board, especially considering that it looks like an office park. Uh, and Hayden's going to walk through the process of putting that processor in. There you go. Right. So what are some guidelines to always keep in mind when you're putting a processor into a board like this? You want to make sure that you are lining up your starting rules for your symbols. Basically, there's little grooves. I don't know if you can see. Little grooves that oh, line okay. up. Inside there, might be a little hard to see. Make it makes it that much more difficult to screw it up. There's only one way to put this in, basically. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll get that popped down. All the panels are coming off that case. So, what's the next stage? Are we gonna put? You usually go with the M.2, right? Yes. Um, 
I grabbed the RAM. Yeah, What's there's the RAM? usually a it's, few options okay, here. Yeah. You can do the M.2, we could do the RAM, we could put the liquid cooler bracket on. Typically, we do the M.2 first and just get that out of the way, and then we'll install the AIO bracket, get that mounted, and then do the RAM last. Um, sometimes, the, when you get the AIO bracket there, it can be close to the RAM slot, so if you already have your RAM installed, it can be a little bit of a pain to get the wire so plugged in. Let's chat about that heat sink that he just pulled off. Obviously, there's quite a few in the Northridge and the Southridge. And just so for those who may not know, what do heat sinks do and why are they important? Yeah, so heat sinks is um, they absorb heat from the components that they're touching. And then they usually have fins built in. You can see those cuts out on the overhead shot there. And that will allow air to pass through there and pull the heat off the metal and keep everything cool. Nice. As for the M.2 going in there, this is a Kingston one terabyte NVMe M.2 SSD. This is going to be for the operating system and it's going to be lightning fast. Uh, these are these are real rippers. It's great. Mm -hmm. I love the fact that it looks like a skateboard ramp. Like when you get in mm -hmm. right, it just sticks up. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of funny that that's how it is. It'll just spring itself back up at that 45 degree angle. All right, getting that put down. Then, of course, we've got the ZDR5 5600 Kingston RAM. Now, these are two 16 gig sticks going in for a total of 32 gigs on this build. What are some differences in between? Like, how much speed difference are we talking about between DDR4 and DDR5? Yeah, so the base speed for DDR4 is 2133. Uh, this is all megahertz. Um, typically, what okay. you see now with DDR4, most sticks of RAM you buy are going to be overclocked or from the factory at 3200. Um, they do go up to 3600, and that's the highest DDR4 I've seen. Um, whereas DDR5, I think the base is 5200, um, and then these are actually 5600. So these are, you know, almost double as fast. That's wild. Mm -hmm. As far as you know, what the RAM handles, what, what exactly does the RAM do for the operating system? Yeah, so what the RAM does is it's preparing the information for the CPU. Um, it's kind of like a temporary storage. If you're like going to grab a glass of water, it's that, you know, the memory that's right before you do that. So um, it allows the processor to communicate very quickly um, as opposed to just going from the hard drive. So it's like a temporary storage for the information. Gotcha. Well, that makes a lot of sense. Now we're getting that AIO bracket on there. One thing I do want to bring up is the fact this is a four slot board that can max out at 128 gigs total of uh, of RAM in those four slots. But right now we're using 32 and it's going to be in slots two and four. Uh, how does that work? Yeah, so the RAM slots are, are known as this is dual channel. So there's two channels of RAM. Um, so that's why we use slot two and four. This would function if we were using slots one and two. It just wouldn't perform as well as it will if you've got them in those channels. Um, and in order to know which channels to put it in, you want to look at your uh, motherboard book that comes with it. Most of the time, if you've got four RAM slots and you have two sticks, you're going to use two and four. But definitely check your motherboard guide just to make sure on that. Gotcha. Awesome. So now we're dealing with the framing for the Glacier One AIO 360 liquid cooler. That's a closed system cooler as opposed to an open loop. And this provides just the extraordinary heat dissipation mm -hmm. from what I understand. Yeah, this Glacier One cooler is one of the best AIOs that I've seen performance wise um, and just getting temps down. Um, so I've got it in my hand here. Hayden's installed the hardware for the motherboard. Um, so he's going to go ahead and clamp this down a little bit, but just to kind of show you how this works. So it's got a copper plate here that's going to fit right on top of the CPU um, and make a really solid connection there. And then heat will transfer to this plate. And then there's water running through here or liquid running through here, usually a coolant, um, to take that heat away, put it through the radiator, cool it off, and cycle it back through. So that's how this whole thing works. Gotcha. Mm. Seems simple enough. So as far as the brackets go, they just mount on the back of the uh, of the motherboard, poking up through so that you can solidify it straight on down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so these AIOs will come with multiple different brackets for whatever chipset you're using. 
um, or whatever type of CPU, whatever type of board you have. So this is a 1700 socket board, so we're using the 1700 socket bracket, obviously. Um, if this was an AMD build, like an AM4, we would use that hardware. And I want to point out that little dot that Hayden just put down there, that is, that's the thermal paste. Yeah, you can see this right here from the shot. You can see that little dab right there. I usually say a pea-sized drop of thermal paste. Um, once this plate gets down and tightened down, it's going to really smush that thermal paste down and spread it out all over the processor. And then once the <coughs> system's turned on, it heats up and makes it a little bit more fluid. So um, you can definitely put too much thermal paste on where it'll be oozing out the sides and you'll see it on your board. Usually that's okay. It won't really affect the performance, but you know, you don't want to have just extra thermal paste on your board. Yep. I, uh, I, 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 Hey, I'm one of those idiots who's done that. Yeah, so. <laughs> and you want to make sure your thermal paste goes on top of the processor because we've seen some pretty bad applications where it's put on the pins in between the motherboard and the processor. Oh, no. And that's not good. Is that even a recoverable situation? Uh, with some delicate care, yes. So like on an Intel board or I guess the new AMD boards as well that have the pins on the motherboard, it's a lot harder to clean because you don't want to bend those uh, bend those pins. But you can get yeah. some like isopropyl alcohol and a toothbrush and scrub it very lightly to get it off. Um, and yeah, that should no, work. It's, and that's why we leave it to the professionals. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, right now he's... We've got Hayden plugging in that cable that's going to be utilized for the cap because mm -hmm. this does come with an infinity mirror cap, which is really cool. Yeah, this thing looks great when it's on. I've got the cap. You can see the cap right here. Uh, do you want to yeah, mount the fans awesome. to the radiator before you put it in? Yeah. Okay, I'll start getting these fans open then. Uh, as for the fans, we've got seven uh, Game DS. Aeolus M2 ARGB fans. These are all 120s mm -hmm. in size. So we'll have three on the AIO, and those are going to be pushing through. Mm -hmm. Correct? Awesome. And of course, that's called a push. You can make a push pull, but not today. Not today. We're saving that. Actually, we did a push pull of, with a 120 lap on Thursday. Oh, yeah, that's right. We did. Yeah, we had enough room yeah. to fit an extra fan on there, so... That was good. Yeah. Please. Uh, that's an excellent question. Let me go ahead and ask that. And by the way, if you have any questions about the things that you see or hear on this show today, please list them in chat because we are always here to answer your questions. Uh, Necrodizo says, on sealed liquid cooling systems, does the coolant ever need to be changed? And what's the life expectancy of one of those sealed coolers? Um, good question. Yeah, that's a good question. So, no, the coolant doesn't need to be changed. Um, this is going to last longer than most. Than you'll have the system, most likely. Um, I don't have, like, an exact date. That's obviously going to vary between which cooler you're using. But, no, you should never have to mess with it. That's what's nice about these AIOs and their closed loop is they're just good. They don't take any maintenance, so. Yep. Oh, it a good angle for the for the Horus right there. Put, Excellent. Put ram and prune juice, huh? Wait, who the heck does that? I don't know. Mr. Dolphin's there, I guess. In, keep it running smoothly. <laughs> oh, no. no, Mr. Dolphin's. I do not feel like that is something anyone should do. <laughs> also, you know what else you shouldn't do? Look away from the screen for too long. We've got a cold drop. Horus dash F5 M3, which is. I don't have either. <laughs> F5 M3 is the next code. Make sure you put that in the day before midnight. That's when that drawing happens. We're going to miss that PC. We've had that here. Wait, for, what? We're going to miss that one. We've had it here for a while. <laughs> I like the green design. I need an air raid siren. That's what I need. <laughs> oh. All right. Getting all those fans locked on there. And I know you kind of go through this each week with me, but mm -hmm. just for those people who aren't necessarily uh, aware, how do you tell which way the fan's blowing? Yeah, no, that's a great question to go over. Um, so I've got this fan in my hand here. We'll get a shot on it right now. If we can switch to the other shot there, Jason. Uh, go here. 
Um, all right, so we got our fan here. So it's no which way the fan uh, air is blowing. On previous, like older fans, there used to be arrows printed on the side that would, you know, point one direction and a rotational speed. Um, so, but the easiest way to tell on these is whichever side has the fan grill. So you can see this back here. We know air is going to come out of this side. So if you don't see the grill, it. if it looks like this, this is going to be your intake. Gotcha. Okay. Cool. Yeah. So, Hayden, why is it important to get these installed now as opposed to after you've got the motherboard in the case? It makes it a lot easier. If I were to put the radiator in first and then put, try to put the fans on, you would be going at a really awkward angle. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Try to screw in fans upside down, basically. Yeah, that could yeah, be that problematic. Could be <laughs> All right, well, looks like you got everything prepped. Yep. So, we'll bring up the court case here. Of course, Hayden, one of the yeah. fastest builders in the company. Mm -hmm. Not that and we appreciate case. you taking it as slow as you can. Yeah. <laughs> I think if we had a company race, you would win, Hayden. Listen, I've been thinking about that. For we a we might need time. to do a race between me, you, and yes. Zach up here on stream. Okay. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll take third. Built yeah. three identical systems. I've got I've got some stuff up my sleeve that I'm ready for that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not gonna tie anything up and I'm just gonna run all the cables everywhere oh, in the okay. system. <laughs> that would be fun though. We'll have to pick a build to do. That's uh that actually yeah, that's a great idea. Mm -hmm. Hi, I passed George, Nicole. Hello. Hello. Hi. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Uh, I believe, oh, can I talk about Thursday's show? No. I'm not sure. I'm not can. sure. I'm going to have to check with Ivory here to see if we can. Yeah. I'm going to put this over sure. here, Hayden, in case you need it. Yep. I love the fact that I have Ivory in my ear, but you guys can't hear him. <laughs> um, okay, perfect. So, yeah, that was, that was what I was going to know. On to... On... <clears throat> Thursday, we've got a really, really fun build, and it's going to be our giveaway build for February, and it is part of the new Pink series, which is incredible. And if you want to see a link to it, check out the special editions page. Uh, we've got some rad builds over there, but this is going to be fun, perfectly on theme for the month of Valentine's Day, or as I call it, Singles Awareness Day, which is abbreviated <laughs> to SAD, S-A-D. So that I is celebrate great. I have Wednesday. never heard that. So, and yeah. I wish people, when people wish me happy Valentine's Day, I say, happy sad. Happy sad, yeah. It gets awkward very quickly. It's just a corporate holiday <laughs> to make you spend your money. You know? <laughs> yeah, no, my uh, my housemate and my one of my best friends and I are going to go to a, go out to a Mexican restaurant that is celebrating, a big, having a big thing there because uh, both Kevin and I are single and... Thomas's partner is we're, is on location down in San Francisco for the next three weeks and won't be back. So we're like, screw it. <laughs> we're going out and getting the uh, Bogo Margs and some fajitas. Okay. There we go. That sounds great. Uh, yes, that is, I say please, GG. Uh, welcome. Is it Pitable? Pitable. I'm just going to call you Pity. Call him uh, Mr. No, Worldwide. Well, like Pitbull, but... Yeah, welcome. <laughs> welcome to the show. <laughs> Again, Horus F5M3. There we go. All right, now we've, uh, we have taken all the electric tools away from Hayden just to try and slow him down slightly. So he's using the ratchet. Uh, is I've noticed that a lot of people, including guys, will use magnetized tips for yes. screwing things in to keep keep track of the uh, it, and that will that negatively affect any of the components no so um it won't affect any of the service mount components here all the memory that's on your motherboard is like solid state it's not stored magnetically like on a hard disk drive you know that used to have to be scared of back in the day like don't put a monitor a magnet on your crt monitor or anything like that um so no the magnet won't affect that at all i uh i, I once ruined a tube tv it was mm -hmm. regular old TV back in the back in the 80s, and uh, I put a big speakers right next to it, mm -hmm. and then put a magnet on top of it to see what would happen. And uh, I permanently screwed up that entire TV. 
Ooh, that sucks. Yeah, it was a Damn. radar. It was an old radar magnet that my dad had from the Air Force. This thing was like a giant horseshoe looking thing, but it was like this thick and this tall. Like, wait a bloody ton. I walked in there and sat on the TV and it just went, <laughs> wait, oh, well, that's strong. Oops. Like, you didn't want to drop any tools 10 feet of it or they would slide a room. When more watches that way. Oh, no. Yeah, the gauss, exactly. There we go. <laughs> All right. Put up. Already got some, uh, that we'll get the lines and base in there. One thing I love about this case is it comes prepped with these little Velcro straps. Yeah, I really like this right here. You can see it right here. We'll still use some zip ties to neaten this up, but these are really nice. There's a little um, clip here. You can't see it's tucked behind this little door, but that's what this Velcro strap will latch onto, and then you can tighten them down and hold these cables, make them look really neat. I really like this Speaking case. Of fun little. Oh yeah, go ahead. Uh, I was say I love this case. This is the case I use in my personal system at home. It's got these doors that will go over it. We'll show at the end and cover up all this. Just really clean. Well, and from this shot right here, I would love to. Can you pull out that lower filter? I want people to see that. Yeah. That intake that'll be underneath the uh, the PSU. Yeah. So right here, you can watch it slide out. It's going to be right here. Let's see if this come out. Super simple. Super easy. Yep. That's all it is. And that'll be for the intake of the power supply? Mm hmm yep. The power supply will get air in from the bottom and then exhaust it out the hole right here. So kind of like the O11, this case is designed for none of the heat from the power supply to get into the main part of the case. Yeah, which is great. Mm hmm Absolutely great. Well, I like the fact that it's got a fresh spot, you know, it's got a fresh air intake. Yeah. Uh -huh. Pull air from inside the case. Right, yeah. Adds to the heat. Uh, we've got a random question for Hayden from T Hogs. When was the last time you went bowling? At the alley. Uh, Friday. Friday night. It's like you know it's like you know <laughs> who I am. <laughs> Hayden was getting lit at the alley. Yes, Friday night. It was a lot of fun. Hayden's twenty one now, everyone. Woo! Giant round of applause. Mm -hmm. And of course, for anybody else in here, if you got questions, please feel free to throw them at us. We love questions. Right? Welcome to adulthood. It just goes down from here. It just goes down. Uh, well, I mean, technically, no. Hitting 24 is the next pin, because then you can rent a hotel room and a car. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Let's try. What about... Getting it into the right spot is always essential. There we go. We can watch Hayden delicately mount this motherboard here. What are some key things to keep mounting a motherboard? So the biggest thing is you want to make sure your standoffs are um, incorrectly. And the standoffs are the part that the motherboard actually sits on. So I'm going to lift this up real quick just to show it. So these black posts you can see right here. These are the oh, standoffs. Okay. And then there's holes on the motherboard that those will sit on and we'll put the screw in. And that's what secures the motherboard to the case. And those are important because yeah. if you have a standoff in a spot where it shouldn't be and the motherboard is touching that, it could short out the motherboard and cause a lot of issues, so. Yikes. Yikes. Yeah. That's... So. While Hayden's putting this in, I want to jump back over to the Ezrock Z690 Steel Legend DDR5 uh, board. This is an incredible board with a lot of features and options. Uh, aside from just all of the pieces you can see right there with the heat sinks, um, it's also quite an interesting I.O. on it in the back of it. This has uh, not only a USB-C, but multiple USB-3s. Obviously, it's got a 2.5 gig LAN port. It's a Dragon port. Really, really, really fast. Uh, surround sound, five-point five, uh, five point system surround sound, and it also has connections for the front. How many ports are on this case? Yeah, so this case is going to have, they'll be up here at the top. So we've got a Type-C up here and two USB 3.0s, and we've got a headset and mic port as well. Gotcha. 
So lots of different ways to connect, mm -hmm. lots of different ways to... Uh, yeah, what's nice about there. this case, and I'll show this real quick too. Let me grab the front panel. So uh, those ports are actually hidden behind a door. So this is obviously your front panel here. Mm -hmm. um, and then those ports are going to be under this door. So you just push up here. Oh, my gosh, that's cool. Yeah, so if you're not using it, this will just stay here down and give you a nice, flush, huh. clean look. I, yeah, I'm glad somebody addressed that. And just in case anybody's wondering, uh, <laughs> Zion the Lion, love that name. I uh, want to know if, uh, you know, do you have to be in here live to win it? No. Uh, that, that's going to be the drawing happens after midnight tonight. So that's when the giveaway will finally close down. Uh, the one thing this board does have, it does have an M.2 key E for Wi-Fi. So uh, in the event they wanted to add Wi-Fi or Bluetooth to this, whole difference, that, 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 that option is there at that point. The board does come with some custom LEDs underneath it, which makes it nice. Yeah, it was really cool was, seeing this one light up on the on the first the sway build that we did. Right? Um, yeah. Just looks great with the white fans and everything. All right. All right. So, board is mounted. We're about to be Hayden's about to be installing the AIO. So we're going to be doing okay. this in the top of the case. Is it all right if we rotate it? Yep. We're gonna rotate it, I think, this way. Is this look? Mm -hmm. Nicole's like, we don't draw midnight. It's just that it closes at midnight. It <laughs> Nicole's, I'm not staying up to draw this thing. I'll do it in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, of course, once that has happened, I'm assuming that we will probably be able to announce that winner on Thursday. Hopefully. So. Uh, one thing that this board does come with is it comes with a, with the Azrock graphics card holder, uh, which is helpful for when you've got larger cards. And let's be fair, this card is thick. Yes, it is. This is our thick it's... boy card. All right, this is a 4080, and it is by whom? Is this an Accelerate? Yes, this is the Accelerate. This is a big card. Let's talk card. about some of, the, some of the features of that. Yeah, so... It's got a really nice backplate on here that I like, first of all, an all-metal backplate. Um, and then oh, our PCB only goes out to here, but you can obviously see our heat sink extends way far out past that, and we've got really good ventilation on both sides to keep this card cool. Oh, yeah. Um, this big, does, big fans. Yeah. This has some RGB components as well, and this comes with a good motherboard mounting bracket that we will use. Um, like you mentioned, the ASRock board does come with one, and we like that one as well. Um, but the bracket that comes with this will actually um, help hold it a little bit more securely than that one. So we're going to go with that one. Okay. Awesome. Uh, on the back plate, you, I did notice that big X. It looks like that is that may light up. I'm hoping it does, to be fair. If not, it still looks awesome. Yeah, there's probably something there. <laughs> it's just... It's great. Now, heat sink is gigantic because this thing does produce a lot of heat. I don't know if you want to go into, do, you want to jump into the uh, example? Yeah, yeah. Let me grab that real yeah, let's quick. Take I a got look, it right show here, you guys actually. What the inside of a graphics card looks like and why those heat sinks are so big. All right. So, we've got our 1050 Ti here, putting it to great use because this card doesn't work. Using this as a good visual aid. So this is out of warranty defective. I've already taken the screws out that secure the, the heat sink to the card. So all we got to do here for this is pull it off. We'll unplug the fan header. You can see right here. Try to get my fingers out of the way. And then we've got our video card here. So everything for your video card, all the important stuff is right here. We've got our memory chips yeah. around the outside, and you can obviously see our GPU with the thermal paste on there. Um, everything else, every part of the, every other part of this card is just to keep it cool. So if we look at the 4080, you can see kind of this orangish, yellowish line right here, and how yeah. that stops. That's our that's our PCB. That's exactly what this is. Um, so the rest of this card is just to keep it cool. So that kind of shows you how powerful this thing is. How hot that thing gets. Mm -hmm. uh, I've yes, it is true. This Porter 1050 has been dissected multiple times in 
you know, in, in honor for science. It has, yep, it has. Is for scientific, ex, you know, explanation. Mm -hmm. I almost said exclamation and then realized that's not the right word. <laughs> <laughs> Neat. Uh, yeah, and Wise Falcon will be doing it yeah, on the stream on Thursday for sure. You have a 1650 Super in yours. Awesome. I'm, I'll be honest, I'm not super familiar with the 16 series. Yeah, the 16 series was kind of a weird drop after the 30 series, I believe. 16 I so. series. I kind of get it mixed in with the 20 series. But yeah, it was a nice um, alternative, a little bit cheaper card, more, more for a budget build. Um, but they're good cards. Yeah. I run a, uh, my, my streaming PC, all it has is a 1070 in it. That's it. Mm. Like, you don't really, I mean, don't really need a whole lot of draw on that because really the capture card is what works it. Okay, yeah. Yeah, 1070 is still a solid card. Yeah. Yep. I used to have a 1050 and then I upgraded. <laughs> mm. <laughs> I was like, well, that does, yeah. All right, so Hayden is mounting the support bracket for the GPU holder that we were just talking about. So that's going to mount. Oh, that just goes. Yeah, the, yeah. Right this part board. mounts directly to the motherboard in place of those motherboard screws. <clears throat> I'll try to kind of point it out with my pen here. There we go. Yeah. I'll try to get a little bit more light in here, maybe. Yeah, there we go. That's great. So yeah, we've got one here and one here, and then all these holes here allow us to put the other piece wherever we need to that's going to best support the video card. We can't install that just yet, though. Yeah. The yeah, card we, has to be in. Yeah, we, we won't install that yet since the card has to be in for us to do that. Gotcha. All right. Now, one of the things that we loved about this build and the design behind it is the fact that the color on the fans lights up everything inside of that system. Mm -hmm. It looks wild. But one thing that I was confused on the first time I ever saw one of these builds is I always just figured that it was the fans in the front that colored, that provided the color. But that's not entirely true. There's actually LEDs on that front panel. Yeah, yeah. Let me grab this front panel again. I'll show you that as well. Yeah, there's, uh, so there's two LED strips on the back of this panel. So obviously this is the front. And on the back, we've got these two LED strips. These come mounted to the front from the factory, and it gets power in kind of a cool way. So we've got this little piece of PCB here with three golden pins, and these kind of push in a little bit. These aren't stuck. And then those are going to make contact with the front of the case right here, huh. and that's how awesome. it gets its power. It's a pretty cool design. And then there's so also... You don't have to plug anything in. It just... Yeah, once you snap it. it in, it's good. Um, and then on the side here, you can see where my finger is, this little line that runs the length of the case, that's going to be RGB as well. Awesome. Uh, T Hogs does have a question uh, for Paul. Um, what are some things you can do to your GPU to see if it will show video that's out of warranty? Okay, so like if I wanted to see if this thing got video, um, obviously I would install it in the system, put the heat sink back on it, of course, and then just plug it into a <laughs> monitor. Um, make sure you've got the right video setting on your monitor, and then, you know, like, let's say maybe I wasn't getting video on the HD, uh, HDMI, I would plug in the display port, because sometimes you can have a card that just has, like, a bad HDMI port or a display or a bad display port, so you can use one or the other. <laughs> Ivory, use it without the heat sink. Coward, you won't. Please don't. Use it without the heat. Yeah. <laughs> it'll go it'll be on for a second and then it'll be over. <laughs> right. What do you want to install right. next, Hayden? Probably the power supply. Power supply? Okay. This power supply is uh is a lot of fun. This is a there it is. This is a thousand watt Fantex Amp Series 80 plus gold and it is white so it matches the build. Yeah, I really like this power supply. We got the Fantex power supply, Fantex cooler, Fantex case. Staying on theme here. There we go. Lots of cables. Lots of cables. So I'll let Hayden kind of get those cables out and I'll show you yeah. guys about this power supply. So this is a fully modular power supply. 
um, which means that none of the cables come pre-soldered in from the factory. So we've got these ports right here. Might have a sticker like this to take off. Um, but what this allows us is to only use the cables that we need to for the build. So we've got all these ports here with the cables will plug in. Um, and that just allows us to have a cleaner build, less restricted airflow, just an overall better look. Uh, <laughs> shenanigans? No. Shana Shane Gaming. I don't know why. I just immediately altered that to shenanigans. Uh, Shane G Gaming Company says, use toothpaste as replacements for thermal paste. Mm, I feel like... No. <laughs> It'll work. Let's yeah. not do that. When I was in tech school getting my A plus cert, that's what we used on like fake builds. Like we weren't actually turning the system on, but we used toothpaste as opposed to thermal paste. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. Keep your system minty uh, fresh. Boss status is I want to see what the floor looks like after a build. They toss everything on the floor. Yes, they do. We do. Gets it out of the way, but the floor gets pretty bad. Yeah. We're getting better though. The floor looks really good today. So we've got a nice trash can here, but yeah, there for a while, it was pretty rough. Winter's in the house. What's up, Winter 501st? How are you? All right, getting those in there. Uh, Hayden, what's the best way to tell which cord goes where and why? On this power supply, everything is labeled, so it's only gonna get plugged in one way, unless you got it. shove it in. Which Obviously, wouldn't be good. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you can see on one end of these cables here, like right here, this end will say PSU. I'll try to get it close here. See, okay. Oh, got it. Yeah. So right there, that. it'll say PSU, and then on the other end, it'll tell you what kind of cable it is. So this is for PCIe connection, which is your video card. Um, so yeah, not all modular power supplies have the cables labeled this well. They should be, but they don't. Gotcha. It's becoming. It's now becoming more of an industry, industry standard. Mm -hmm. It should always be labeled on the power supply. Yeah, itself, yeah. And around the connections on the power supply, there's brackets that are kind of hard to see. The camera can't really pick it up well, but it kind of brackets off the ports on the power supply to tell you what cable goes in there. Awesome. And they are actually like the corners are cut a little differently. It looks like all squares when you're just looking at it like this, but some of them have the corners cut, so they're keyed, so you can't plug in the cable into the wrong slot. I made it Hayden proof. <laughs> <laughs> and how often do you find that happening? Uh, Pe people trying to plug it into the wrong spot. Honestly, like, not too often. Yeah. There's, the biggest thing is the other end. So, like, your CPU cable and your video card cables are both 8-pin, but your video card is usually a 6 plus 2, so 6 on one section, 2 on the other, whereas your CPU is a 4 plus 4. So they're pretty easy to tell the difference between. Gotcha. Uh, Shane Gaming likes my hair. I appreciate it. That's fantastic. <laughs> uh, yeah, it, it, it basically dipped and said, I'm out <laughs> a while back. And I was like, well, fine. Then we discovered that Zach and Hayden have all the hair. And so then I know where it went. Listen, I need a haircut. It went to a That's good cause. Hat. <laughs> Simply invisible, right? My my hair's got active camo engaged. That's what's going That's on. It. <laughs> yes, there we go. If you subscribe to DJ's right. OnlyFans, you can see his hair. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. I've ever told you a story, the story about that? I think so. So, somebody as a joke started an OnlyFans in my name. And I was like, wait, what? And the image there is hilarious. But it, somebody was like, you have an OnlyFans. I do not have an OnlyFans. <laughs> sure enough, I did. Sure enough, did. Oh, I do, technically. And so I had to get a hold of OnlyFans and be like, hi, this is me. And I didn't start this account, so can we just kind of reset it over to me and I'll just keep it and not use it? Like, oh, sure. Send them out the information. It was actually really simple to get it all taken care of. I was very, very impressed with their... Uh, the process, but yeah, I was ghost definitely ghost activated. That's nice that it was easy for you to get that back. That would be pretty frustrating. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh god, yeah. Well, I mean, <laughs> I 
I'm a sleeper agent. Yeah. Well, here's, you know, they had this thing where they were looking for uh, creative content on OnlyFans. And so I got an offer to go and DJ there. But I was like, um, t no. <laughs> here's the thing. No. Just mm -mm. <laughs> only DJs, right? That's what we need to start is an only DJs. Yeah. It's just nonstop music all over the place. Subscribe to listen. Yep, I already DJ enough. Isn't that just Spotify? Well, basically. <laughs> Except for it's not live, you know. Uh, yeah, so. Now that we're getting this in there, we're getting much closer to the end here. What's up next? Yeah, so Hayden's running all of his cables. Uh, assuming you're going to start tying up the fan cables first. He's got the fan controller box out. Um, so all of our fans are going to plug into this box here. Um... Uh, this is the fan controller for the Game DS RGB fans. This can hold eight fans and two light strips. We're using seven fans, so we'll have plenty of space for this. And then this gets power via SATA from our power supply. And then this can be controlled with our remote. So it'll all be synced up together. Starting. Yeah, everything will be synced up together. I'm gonna go ahead and while Hayden's doing that, I'm gonna install our storage drive into this tray, and this tray will Perfect. snap into the bottom. So. While you're doing that, uh, Necrorizo says, you know what, let's just have an OnlyFans where it's just me trying on different wigs while DJing. <laughs> I like it. Just male hair pieces. All, honestly, all I want is some sort of like a Velcro or glue on mohawk and I'm fine. I would I miss, subscribe. I miss, my, I miss having a mohawk. It was never gigantic. It wasn't huge, but it was, you know, I dug it. Made, made me feel more aerodynamic. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, it's definitely a licensing thing. Um, I, like, there's there's things like that's why I don't take requests when I'm streaming on Twitch is because when I'm DJing on Twitch is because there are different you know, different labels have different music available to them. We're like, well, do you have this? I'm like, I might, but I need to check and see if it's covered under my license. Right? <laughs> mm. So. Blaine, oh yeah, right. Blaine always had rad mohawks. Anybody who didn't, doesn't know, uh, Blaine used to be at DreamHack and shit, awesome, nice guy, but always had a wicked, wicked mohawk. J Dog Crazy, hello, hello. Uh, the giveaway, yeah, there we go. It is. You want to type exclamation give Horus. Obviously, with the uh, the giveaway for Sway is over. And speaking of which, Nightbot does bring up a good point. If you would like to get involved in our community and immerse yourself into the wonderful joys that is CLX Gaming, check out our Discord. It's discord.gg slash CLX Gaming. Right there. If we wanted to go hard mode on Hayden, we could just tie helium balloons to his wrists. <laughs> which could be funny. I'd like that. Ish. All right. Getting all that lined up. What are some key elements here and important practices when getting your tie downs going? Um, basically, if you can get everything in two, two columns on the left side and the right side, getting everything uniform and tucked under, you should be pretty good to go. Uh, oh, Shane, I don't know if you're referring to me, but no, 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 absolutely not. I make fun of my my lack of hair all the time. It's really fun is uh, when you're being in a dance club, you start sweating and then the lasers hit your, your, your head and you see it actively reflect. It's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Like there's there is there is not enough anti shine for that to happen. <laughs> is that an actual product anti anti shine? Well, it gets there sure there is. are some uh, that you can use so that you're, you know, especially for guys like me, so I don't look like I'm dolphin shiny <laughs> dolphin smooth up there. Um <laughs> The uh, <laughs> right of matte finish is what I like. Uh, there, there are products that do that, which is fun. Okay. The things that drive that are funny 
is I'm gonna take my headphones off for this one. I love hoodies because it I'm in Oregon and it rains here. So the upside is that great haircut for it. Downside is it you know that there's always a gap in the t-shirt right at the back of your neck. If water hits my head, first of all, I can hear rain and it sounds different. And then it drops right down in your back every time because there's no hair to stop it. But most importantly, if I'm you know like a windbreaker and I put it up and the wind hits the windbreaker, there is no hair for it to catch on it just slides right off. Oh, every time. <laughs> every time. That is funny. So, yeah. Yep, that is a that is a thing. But I also save on shampoo. Oh yeah. Uh-oh. All right, you are your own disco ball. Yes, wise falcon. I am. I am that fabulous. <laughs> I want to get a t-shirt with that. I'm my own disco ball. <laughs> yep. More aerodynamic. It's sleek. There we go. <laughs> nice. Okay. Now I've got those ties going in on the back. One thing to keep in mind, we tell everyone every stream about this because it is important. If you ever have to replace anything on your device, if you ever need to, say, switch out a fan or switch out a graphics card, make sure that you take a picture of your uh, tie-ups, the way that the cable management is positioned. Do it with, take a picture with your phone. It's super simple. That way you have a map to know where these things were, how they managed, because it's very important to get it back into that same alignment because it has it, it can affect airflow how yeah. important is that yeah that's just a really good guide to have if you ever got to mess with anything and get it back to looking how you wanted it um because these tie-ups are going to look really clean very nice um and we do that to obviously make it easier if you got to do anything and then yeah help yeah. Um, not restrict the airflow um and this case is good because we've got this channel right here for our cables uh, we'll show it at the end here, and then those doors that cover it, that will just smooth out the airflow as well. I love that side shot because you get to see all of all the zip ties just sticking out at him like a weapon. Yeah, Hayden's <laughs> looking for a real good dopamine hit here. Get some all right. done and then just all clips the, them all at the same time. All the clipping. Uh -huh. All the clipping. Every single That's time. That's hilarious. Yep. <laughs> Well, while we're getting that done, uh, before it gets to the clipping, let's take a look over at something more fun, and that is how can you get your order in on our website? Jason, let's get show them. At CLXGaming.com, we make it even easier than you could possibly imagine to create and build your own PC. Whether you want something huge or small, we have a multitude of different designs that you can start with, even from the base. Whether you're an architect or a video producer, a content creator, or a pro gamer, you can get exactly what you need the way you want it. It's really great. You don't have to be an expert about it. You don't have to be an official about it. You don't have to be Paul or Hayden because we've got a foolproof conflict resolution system built into it, which will tell you if you pick something that's not necessarily compatible, it'll give you solutions. Maybe it needs you to change the motherboard. Maybe you need to change the RAM, but it will tell you what's going on with that until everything is compatible and ready to go. But don't worry, you don't have to build your own system if you don't want. We have plenty of pre-built and ready-to-ship models that are available day in and day out right there at our website. So step up into the next game and make sure you get what you need the way you want it. CLXGaming.com Ta-da! Love it. Now, one thing I do want to point out because it's uh, it, we always like to talk about this, and that is what happens with every system that is built at CLX. Yeah, so every system we do here, whether it's a giveaway build, a customer build, a show build, anything like that, um, once it's done being assembled, it all goes into our testing and integration department. And we do a few things in there. So we start off with getting into the BIOS, making sure your memory speed is uh, set correctly. There's a few other settings we check in there and make sure they're set. Um, and then from there, we'll load the operating system, any other programs we need to, anything the customer wants installed. And then once that's all installed, we'll stress test the system for 12 hours. Uh, we have a few benchmarking software that we use. Uh, mostly we use 3 Mark and FurMark. Um, but there's some other ones, Prime95, that we'll mess with if we feel like it's necessary. And we do that stress test for 12 hours to make sure this, the machine is totally stable. And that way you get a solid product when you get it. 
Uh, we do have a question coming in from 20s Contra, mm -hmm. or Contra 1. The, uh, it says, always wonder this, but how much structurally, in terms of setup, are actually important between different types of work PCs and gaming PCs? Are gaming PCs already focused on extracting quite a bit of performance? Yeah, so as far as, if you're talking about um, the setup as far as loading everything, it's pretty much the same. Um, and as far as hardware goes, obviously a really nice gaming machine can, can do any type of works, um, like a regular workstation. Now, if you're into video editing and, and processing a lot of images and stuff, you might want some different hardware that's more tuned for that. That can, uh, that can yeah. get you know, pretty taxing on the system. So if you're doing that, you know, definitely look into it. There are builds that we have for that as well. Um, but yeah. I, uh, <clears throat> I'm excited, like for my new build, uh, I'm very excited because I'm gonna be able to functionally run audio production and get into back into music production again. Um, because of like, like to do that, you have to be able to run some pretty ridiculous software. <laughs> oh yeah, uh-huh. Yeah. Like Pro Tools, man, Pro Tools is on a Windows machine is a beast. It is a it is an actual beast. Plus, you've got all the musical prep software like Engine DJ and Serato and Recordbox, but they all run. They, they all have different system requirements. So you got to kind of go with the, wherever the top one is and build up to that. And we're not hyper stressing it. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Like Pro Tools runs better, so much better on this once I got the other 16 gigs installed to bring me up to 32. Mm. Even though the other 16 weren't the same frequency and so it dropped, it obviously drops it down to the lower frequency of those four sticks of, of memory. Mm -hmm. But the difference in performance was wild. Oh yeah, just having the extra capacity there. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. Like it. it it made a much bigger difference than I was anticipating. Mm -hmm. Much bigger. So, all right, now there's a little hole down at the bottom. You can see that Hayden is getting all the cables pulled out through. And that is all the things that are need, gonna need to connect onto the board. Right, these will be for our video card here. So coming out that cable, okay. um, those are our video card connectors. Now this cable does have a 12 pin power that is, or the card has a 12 pin power connector. That's what you see on most of the higher end cards now. So it comes with this adapter that you plug in for your eight pins, which is what Hayden's got in his hand. So this one specifically takes three eight pins. So that's what he's plugging in now. And the end wow. of that black cable you can see will go into the video card. What in the world? Mm -hmm. That's wild. Yeah, if this was a 4090, it would have four eight pins, which is crazy. Crazy, <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> excessive. So, uh, Contra says, so, uh, so if I'm understanding it right, it tends to depend on the type of work when considerations between normal PCs, gaming PCs, and work PCs with those industries where the hardware needs to be different, typically involving heavy duty editing, creative work. It's cool. Thanks for answering that. Yeah, you're very welcome. And uh, yeah, that's Yeah, that's exactly right. it. Yep. Um, architectural builds. And I, I say this because a friend of mine did build one um, because he's an architect and that's what he does. So he had to build it to be able to run all of his CAD software. And so generally speaking, I know that for, he had a 3D CAD software of some kind that was monstrous and it said its minimum specs were 32 gigs of RAM, but recommended 64. So he ended up going with 128 to make sure that wow. he was future-proofing the build mm -hmm. and he wasn't gonna have to do anything else to it for quite some time. Oh yeah, yeah, that's Which smart. Is, I can't even fathom eating 128 gigs of RAM. Yeah, that's so much memory. I don't know if I'll ever I mean, have a machine I'm, with that. I'm going with 64 on my build just because of the audio software. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, and and if it runs the audio software, it's going to run games just fine. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, you see that in a lot of the editing builds. NVIDIA makes actual cards um, for, like, video editing and that stuff. Those are usually called Quadro. There's a whole line of those. But then back in yeah. the day, there was Titan cards as well. And I think Jason in our studio here yeah. has those Titans in his system that are just, I mean, they're good. They're not even, design they're great for gaming, but they're even better. Like, they're overkill with what they can do as far as the Titans go. Yeah. 
Winter Papa first brings up a very good question. He says, so on CLX, when building a computer on the site, will it only list parts compatible or worn if not? Uh, no, so it, it, it'll start with a base build. And then as you choose the parts you want, it's gonna show what's not compatible. And then you, once you get through the list, go back and look up at the at, at what it's telling you. If you're wanting DDR5 RAM, uh, but you've chosen a DDR4 board, it's gonna let you know that, but it will then show you the options of what other boards are compatible with all the other components that you've already got in place. It'll also tell you if you don't have an adequate cooling solution selected, uh, if it's not enough power, if you don't have a big enough power supply to run the pieces that you've gotten, um, and to make sure that there's, you know, enough, you know, if you can only fit five fans in a case, well, then you can only fit five cans in a, fans in a case. Um, if you're going with a smaller build and we got, and there, there are so many incredible builds over there on the website. Um, especially base frames, you know, you got the set, the Scarab, the Horus, the Raw, and then of course the Hawthor is built into a Raw. But I think the, the Scarab I think is our smallest. If I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the Scarab is our yeah. small build. There are ITX builds, which are the really yeah. small boxes. And you can fit... There you go. Yeah, see, check this out. You can see the size of the set versus the Scarabs. Um, and I, I like the build out on, on the Scarabs a lot. Mm -hmm. The Horus, obviously, is a mid-tower. The Raw is the full size. And there's different versions of each of these cases. You can choose the type and style of case that you want based on... Uh, whatever aesthetic you feel represents you and your brand. So, which, which especially if you're a content creator is very important. You wanna make sure that it's themology is matching. You can get different designs, which are gorgeous. Look at these things. Just love yeah, it. Yeah, those are great paint designs. And something yeah. to keep in mind so, too when you're looking at these, just cause the scarab is small, uh, does not mean it's not powerful. You can get a beast of a system in the scarab. It could be, you know, so um, it's not just about the size of the system. Yeah, and uh, mm -hmm. yeah, and yeah, we had one of those built built last week on the after show, which I'll talk about here in just a second. Yeah. Um, Shimosa asks, says, I was thinking about getting a samurai printed onto the glass. That would be awesome, uh, and that is something that I think would you'd have to. That's a that would be a, a Kyle thing. Yeah, re reach out to us if you, if you if you are serious about doing that. We can we can see what we can work yeah. with. So. Um, no, no and guarantees or anything, but definitely reach out if you if you are serious about that. Contra also wants to know about the what's the biggest and beefiest build you've ever made. He's imagining it's probably Hawthor, but before that, uh, a Marrow Blade. Hi, welcome to the show. Uh, it says, hey guys, I'm watching and have been editing client video projects with a Scarab for two years now. Awesome, nice. awesome. Uh, what's your preference? Is it uh, Premiere or uh, DaVinci? If you don't mind me asking. As for the beefy systems, let's talk about that, guys. What's one of the most ridiculously absurd? Yeah, so the most systems. common one we see that's huge is the Fantex Elite. Um, it's pretty much the size of a small refrigerator. Um, it's like if you stack <laughs> two of these Evolve Xs on top of each other, that might be as tall as it. It might be a little bit taller. Um, it's pretty big. So we do a lot of those. Well, we do a few of those every month. Um, open loop. And we do a lot of open loops. Hayden does those open loops as well. Um, something else that's even bigger than that, we've done a custom desk before for our Intel Extreme Rig Challenge, I believe in 2018. And that's actually the system we're using to produce the show here. So um, yeah. it's got two systems in it. And... Um, it's just a crazy build. We, we bought a Leon Lee desk and then did a whole bunch of custom modification to it. Drilled a bunch of holes. It's all open loop. Um, so we've done some, some pretty crazy ones, but the Fantex Elite is definitely the biggest one. The case that you get it looks like a band storage case, like something you'd see like a groupie loading on to a, to a bus. Like it's, it's insane. So, yeah. Um, and to answer your question, it's down there below. It definitely, it's, uh, you'd want to get in contact with CLX on the, from the website to talk about uh, what the options are for artwork, uh, et cetera. So, uh, Wise Falcon, I don't know if you've ever just bopped around on, on our site, but one of my favorite things to do is to go create ridiculous builds. And I've, I did, I played with that, I played with that, uh, that elite build and made an $11,000 PC. I was like, yep, that's a thing. Yeah. <laughs> we see them. It's... it's a thing that I do not need, but it is a thing that is awesome to have done. 
Yeah. All right. So now it looks like we are getting ready for that graphics yeah, card. Yeah, we are getting ready to put in this card. So I'm going to go ahead and throw this in so we can have it at the right shot. So before we throw this card in, we're going to take out the covers that we need um, so that we'll have a gap and the video card can fit in. So this is a big card. It is a triple slot. Yep. So I'll have to take out three of these, and that's what that refers to. There's one there. Here we go. All right. So I'll go ahead and get that card in. Yeah, if you want to just, you can step in. Actually, yeah, I think Hayden's yeah. got the right idea. We're going to lay it down. This, this is a huge card, so we don't want to do anything that could damage the motherboard here. To, to give you an idea about that Elite case, by the way, that thing is almost $900 all on its own. Yeah, the case itself is it's really And it's expensive. just, it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. I'm wrong, it's gorgeous, and it's massive. You can, like, this is a server-based or... Uh, or a or serious production machine. You get multiple graphic cards in there. And the open loop is gorgeous. But yeah. Right, Paul gets power tools, but Hayden gets screwdrivers. That's right. <laughs> That's what we'll do for the race. <laughs> yeah. Hayden gets a, not even a ratcheting screwdriver. You get like a rusted screwdriver out of your dad's toolbox or something like that. <laughs> something you found in the shed. I'll get a DeWalt <laughs> drill, and Zach can use his ratcheting screwdriver. There we go. There we go. Uh, any tips for being for when putting in these cards to make sure that you're not damaging either the, the port or the board itself? So the biggest thing is just make sure you're lined up with that PCIe port right there. You can see Hayden taking his time. Um, on a big card like this, it can be kind of hard to see when you got to peek into the case um, and get it there. Yeah. But what you're doing is you're getting it in and you want to hear for a little click. That would be the clip on the PCIe slot locking into place. So we've got that here, and then you can also look at the back of the case. If we want to go to a side shot real quick before we screw this down. Um, yeah, right here is good, maybe a little lower. So our video outputs on the card are right here. So another thing to look at before you screw this in is to make sure these are lined up and accessible. They can be, sometimes the card can be shifted a little up or down, and these um, um, pieces right here can block that so you wouldn't be able to plug in a monitor cable. Um, so just a couple things to look at. You know, nine times out of ten when you put the card in, that's going to be lined up correctly. Um, but it is something to just take a quick glance at when you do it. Awesome. Uh, and yes, they, they have all been all right. very good, very well behaved. Ivory. PlayStation local! What's going on? A lot of people that I've seen, uh, seen over my, in, in my chat. I'm very happy to see here. Oh, there we go! It's another call! Here we go. Uh, it's Horus AJLF. Absolutely jacked looking forward. <laughs> All jackals lose face. Mm -hmm. Apple, jewel, lime, farfic nougat. I'm just going to keep going until somebody tells me to shut up. Uh, <laughs> it's your code. I believe this is going to be your last code to qualify for the drawing that is going to be happening. Uh, the, the, it closes tonight at midnight. You want to make sure you get all those codes in for the giveaway. Uh, fulfill all the little requests out there and get yourself a chance to win a breathtakingly beautiful machine. While they're getting this next piece put up, let's take a look. I think we still have the graphic for it. Uh, and take a look at what has been put into this Horus build. Because, let's be honest, this build is kind of rad. Uh, here we go. So, this Horus 11 is a mid-tower, obviously. It's got a Ryzen 9 5900X. That is a 12-core processor. Uh, an Azeroth 570 Phantom Gaming 4 board with 32 gigs of... Uh, yeah, DDR4, 3600 RAM. Uh, it's got a Kingston Terabyte M.2 NVMe drive and a 1 Terabyte 3.5 inch Seagate Barracuda in the back as well. It's all being run with a RTX 3078K graphics card, 10 uh, 
Aeolus M2 or M2 ARGB fans and a 750 watt Game Deus Kratos M1 80 plus bronze power supply. And it's all inside of that incredibly gorgeous custom case, as you can see right there. Love this graphic. Love that build. It's actually really cool to look at. It's just difficult to keep the fans off. Yeah. In the same color. <laughs> yeah. And not change every other computer every in the entire I room. The fans. Yep. I change everything in the room. And that's the power <sighs> of a remote control. Yes. Okay, so you've got that you've you've got the cart itself plugged in. What are what what's uh yeah, so we've got the card installed here. We're plugging in those power connectors right now. Gotcha, okay. And then from here, it's pretty much we'll put the panels back on and go from there. So I think we're about ready to get this thing fired up. Nice, let's do it. So you can see the okay, tie up there. That's a great shot at that. And I'm going to grab the doors that for is... that, Hayden, if you're ready for them. Yep. Um, Hayden, well done, dude. That's That looks so clean and so easy mm -hmm. and yet it is the most difficult thing in the world to accomplish oh yeah, the Hayden's yeah, Hayden's like, yeah that's, what I do. Down. that's who i go to whenever i'm stuck on something but so this case also has these doors that'll go on we'll rotate this a yes, little bit yes it is bit. loco yes it is Make it now one of the cool cleaner. features about this is the swinging doors uh unlike the raws the 011s with the with the raw size it's this has got a kind of a different approach to things. Mm -hmm. uh, you got a swinging door as your as your cable cover, and that's what what is the purpose of these two that you're putting on right now? So this is really just for aesthetics. It might smooth out airflow okay. a little bit. There's not going to be a lot on the back side of the case, obviously, um, but I think it's really just for aesthetics. So once this one gets on here, it's like you won't see any cables other than that CPU cable. So the hardest part right here can be getting these doors on. Line, lining those up mm -hmm. yeah i can imagine is there an order in which doors have those two doors have to be put on or um i don't think so but maybe we're finding out that this bottom one needs to go on first right now i don't know usually no yeah usually you don't have to worry about it but so both those hinges got to be lined up just right there we go <clears throat> there we go look at that i love the fact that it snaps and pops right into place mm -hmm. So that and then we get the beauty of the doors. Mm -hmm. So there's the back door right there. And with these being the uh, all glass yes. design, it's it's nice to be able to see that yeah. and have it clean. And yes, contrary, that, that beautiful green machine back there underneath his arm is our giveaway PC. It slides into place, latches right there. Look at this, we got the phase sway graphic on the other door. That beautiful glass letting you see inside of this powerful <laughs> ridiculous machine. Now you've got your top vents on. Or that's a front vent. Okay. I love this. This is so gorgeous. That's the type. Forget that's the top. It's so pretty. It's so nice. Well done. How awesome is that? Mm. Absolutely gorgeous. The incredible artwork. Mad shout out to Kyle, uh, who does all the wicked artwork over here. So much fun. Okay. All right, so we're there we go. Up. Yeah, this thing looks great. Wow. Oh my gosh. I can't wait to see the moment of truth here. All righty, so we'll get it plugged in and we ready to go, Jason and Kyle. We good to fire it up? Okay, getting it plugged in, so we should see some motherboard lights here in a little bit. <clears throat> That'll let us know that oh. the motherboard's got power. Yep, there they are. Shimosa, you should definitely think about getting uh, getting one through CLX. It's awesome. And here we go. Wow, the lights. Let's take a look. It here is. it is. Fully lit up. Wow. That is freaking awesome. I love it. Absolutely love it. So let's go ahead and go through once again what's inside of this incredible custom designed uh, Rengoku inspired device. <laughs> you have got in there an i9 13900K Intel uh, processor mounted on an ASRock Z690 Steel Legend DDR5 motherboard. Now that has DDR5 5600 RAM, there's 32 gigs of it on top of an RTX 4080 graphics card. 
Now, the operating system is on a Kingston NVMe M.2 one terabyte drive. And of course, the secondary storage is a four terabyte uh, hard disk drive, mechanical disk drive. It has a AIO of, I'm sorry, it's a, <laughs> it's, it is in Fantex, right? Mm-hmm. Fantex Picture 1 AIO. Yep. yep, that's what I thought. I don't know why I was stuck on that one. Fantex <laughs> AIO uh, 360 cooling, and it's about 10, no, seven fans. I don't know why I can't read suddenly today. That's great. Ever had a stroke right at the beginning of your show? <laughs> there you go. So, just to uh, just to recap, everybody, get those codes in. Uh, I've, I've, there were codes that were out of my channel. If you, uh, who knows, I might stream later on today, and... We'll go back over all those codes but um oh that's a good question real quick we got one question coming from contra uh do the leds ever affect performance yes each led will add five frames per second no they don't they're all for <laughs> aesthetics <laughs> yeah Jeez, wish they did the more rgb the more frames right it's more like extra RGB, x's in your three xbox gamer tag like, so that you get yeah more it's like nos stickers on your car you know yeah right there we go Okay, well, that is going to be it for this portion of the show. Don't forget, if you want to stay up to date on all the latest and greatest, head on over to our YouTube channel, our TikTok, and our Twitter. It's all CLX Gaming, and of course, we are here every Tuesday and Thursday, starting at 11 a.m. Pacific, that's 2 Eastern, for new editions of CLX Foundry Live. Now, we the show's not necessarily over. We're going to take a break in a moment and come back, and it's going to be Hayden's afternoon to see how many PCs he can finish, and you can ask him all the questions that you want. But until then, I will be back on Thursday with our show where we're going to build out our new giveaway PC and announce the winner that's being drawn tonight. On behalf of Jason and Kyle in production, Paul and Hayden, DJ Blue PDX, don't go away. We've got more right after the break. We'll be right back. <laughs>